Okay, uh, Barry, I last spoke to you on Nero FM just over four months ago. Uh, we spoke about the news then that the gambling regulator, that the government are planning to bring in, won't be established until 2023. I know, I know there is good news this week on the political side of things. Before we talk about that though, can you tell me how you were getting on on being a part of Extern in your day-to-day work? Yeah, it's going great. Like we're getting a huge amount of support from the wider extern organisation. So I mean, I would have started off on my own, but five six years ago, and uh, then Tony O'Reilly joined about a year and a half ago. And when we merged with extern, we became part of an organisation that has over six hundred uh, staff members working in lots of different locations and different types of work in the social care sector uh, across the island of Ireland. So we have a lot of support now from throughout the organisation so it's going really well and you and I only found out recently you and Tony O'Reilly have a gambling clinic don't you yeah well at the moment everything is online so it's a it's an online clinic uh, so we're doing all of our work remotely um, just zoom calls mostly is the way we're working with people but that works fine I mean I've been working with people in different parts of the country, even different parts of the world, using things like Skype and Zoom for years. So, I mean, it works well. All right. Okay, Barry, to move on, can you tell me what is the big news announced this week by the government or Department of Justice on gambling legislation? Yeah, so if they put together an action plan for justice policies uh, for the next three years, I think. So within that, uh, we've got some timelines uh, for this year, which would see a regulator being put in place, and then a new scheme, general scheme of the Gambling Control Bill, which was originally published in 2013. I suppose a new updated version of that, uh, that will be due within quarter three, so I suppose by the end of September of this year at the latest. So it's good to see the government kind of nailing itself down to specific timelines on those. I think that was only announced uh, on Monday or Tuesday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was earlier this week, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think it's great news, you know. Uh, Okay, I believe that the Labour Party in Ireland have a new campaign now, don't they? Yeah, so they've put put together, Senator Mark Wall and Deputy Aon O'Reardon have put together a draft bill which would essentially ban all forms of gambling advertising. That's what they're proposing, um... Actually, they have a Facebook Live today at 1 o'clock where they're going to be discussing this. Uh, Oshin McConville is going to be on there. And I think that I've uh, been speaking to Mark Wall and Aon Noreardon uh, since they uh, proposed it. I think it was last week they launched this. And uh, they're getting very positive feedback. They're getting a lot of engagement from people around the country who are sick that are back teeth to seeing gambling ads every time they watch a sporting event or go onto their social media or go onto YouTube or anywhere else, basically, radio, television, you name it. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, do you know what the feedback uh, the Labour Party have got is like from other political parties and politicians? I think the, what they're saying is that there's kind of broad support for, I suppose, some restrictions to be put on gambling advertising. I think there's an understanding there across a lot of the different parties that it's just way over the top at the moment and some restrictions and I suppose protections for children and for vulnerable adults uh, could and should be put in there. I was in touch with uh, Aon Rearland's office yesterday. I want to interview him on the uh, legislation last well again, you know. I've, yeah. done, I've done loads of interviews with you over the last few years but I haven't covered Gam- problem gambling in Ireland that's well in a good few years you know so hopefully it'll come back to me do you know when the Labour Party are going to put down their motion in the doll on this proposed legislation Barry? Well I think they're going through a consultation process at the moment so anybody who wants to feed into that consultation process you can go to the Labour.ie website it's Labour.ie forward slash gambling there's a short survey like two minute survey you can fill out there that would feed into that public consultation process, and I think once they've completed that uh, public consultation process, then they'd be uh, putting down their draft bill. Okay. Okay, Pai, is there any other news with your work before you go that you think our listeners on the RFM may be inter- interested in? Um, well, I suppose what we're seeing is a lot of people accessing self-help 
tools through our website, which is really good. And I suppose under the COVID lockdown restrictions, what we're seeing is far less people picking up the phone to, to, to call the helpline. And I suppose a bit of a drop off in, in people seeking counselling help as well. So, I mean, and that's understandable because it's difficult for people to get a private moment to do a counselling session or to even just to make a phone call in, in privacy because of the lockdown restrictions. So everybody's stuck at home together. Um, so there are a lot of self-help materials on our website, anyone who wants to go there. We started a podcast last year, myself and Tony. We've had a lot of great guests on there, including Ushi McConville, Mal McNamee, uh, Colin O'Gara, and, and many others from different parts of the world, uh, just looking at different aspects of gambling uh, and, I suppose, the most importantly, how to recover from a gambling problem. So if people want to check that out, it's on all the podcast platforms. It's called the Problem Gambling Podcast.